So good evening, everyone. It's uh, one minute after five, and I will call the uh, select board meeting to order. We have uh, one guest. Would you introduce ourselves, please? Scott Hysham. Yeah, Scott. Uh, Middlesex Fire Department. Yeah, thank you. We're <laughs> glad to have you. Thank you. Um, approving minutes of the June 6, 2023 regular select board meeting. Do you want us to wait a couple of minutes, Bridget? No, I'm good. I got, I got two more paragraphs. Well, yes. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion on the minutes? I move that we accept the minutes of uh, June 6, 2023. Randy? Yes, I Thank you. second. Okay. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Reviewing, amending, and approving the agenda for the June 20th, 2023 Select Board Meeting Action. Likely. I move that we, well, I don't know, unless somebody's got something they want to put in, I'll make the motion to accept the agenda for today, June 20th. Can I, I just need to make an amendment. I just want to add a discussion about the scheduling the first meeting of July. Okay. And you'll accept that, Vic, as an amendment to your. I accept the amendment to uh, discuss the first meeting in July. Perfect. Is there a second? Yeah. Randy, thank you. Um, all those in favor of the uh, motion, which is to accept the agenda for tonight's meeting with uh, one addition by Sarah, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Everybody's favorite topic, final revisions of the town personnel policy action likely. So we are Hi, good evening. Sarah, help me out. Where'd we end up? We left off at section 29 overtime. Yep. So we're on section 30? You left, are you, that's up to the board to decide whether or not they're done with section 29. Well, we didn't I resolve thought. anything in section 29, so I'd I. I'd like to. I'd like to pass over that or move move over that and come back to it when Eric's here. Eric's got a little presentation, and as you remember, uh, Randy was going to explain to him something that he was curious about. Yeah. And uh, I spoke to Eric less than an hour ago, and he said he'd be here. So maybe we can just go circle back to that when he gets here. Well, I like that, Jen. Jen Is that Saki. okay? Yeah, Jen Saki. We'll circle back. Circle back. Yeah, I like her too. Yeah, I do. I like that red hair. No comments. I, I didn't say anything on No, I didn't say it. Let's see what we can think. Hold on, bear with me. So we got the next one. Employment yeah, discrimination. Yeah. I didn't see anything in there that I felt like needed to be changed. I didn't either. It's pretty standard. Are there some new words or new classes of discrimination that we need to add? That's, I guess, is my only question. But I think when we say against a qualified individual, yeah, I mean, it was kind of a blanket thing at the end. I'm fine with it. Anybody else have anything? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Motion to move on? No, don't need one. We're moving on. Okay. Um, sexual harassment, or what I used to call harassment. Okay. 
it was up to me, I'd cut some of that stuff out, but I guess we need to have it all in there. That's the recommended policy. There he is. Hi, Eric. Welcome. Eric, we passed over uh, overtime. Okay. Waiting for you to get here. So we're down to sexual harassment right now. Everybody's favorite subject. Absolutely. What's your pleasure, board members? I mean, I don't see anything that jumps out at me that needs to be revised. I think we've got plenty in there, is what I said. Mm. You good, Bridget? Good. Victor? I am here. Okay, severability. That's pretty standard legal language that I see in most contracts. Yeah. I think that's fine. That's it for them. Is there anything we need to change in the personal acknowledgement? I don't think so. Doesn't look it to me. So with that, or uh, do we have do we have them sign this on an annual basis? Is, is it represented to them, or just on uh, employment? We've had them. We've had them sign it, I believe, when we've amended it. And I would remind everybody that we need to figure out what the procedure is going to be. Are we going to have a special meeting to present this to the road crew? How are we going to do it? Are we going to go over there? Are we going to have a meeting here with them? Are we going to do it during regular business hours? Are we going to ask them to come in the evening? All those questions. And I guess, uh, Eric, what do you think about that? I mean, what's the best way to do that? I just don't want to be the only man standing down there at 530 in the morning. What we could do is I could present it to them, and then if there's any questions, I can bring it back to you guys. Okay. And I can bear the brunt of it. It works then. My job. I do like that. I mean, I <laughs> either that or I don't. I wouldn't mind adjusting to I mean, capture them at the end that. of their day. I think asking them here after after right, hours, you know, you're essentially, uh, you know requesting their presence outside of the normal working hours and and for me you know i i feel like just meeting with them at the end of their day for an hour would be a better situation so um that if they did have questions they could feel it and get a response right the other there. thing the other thing i have been thinking about and having been the lucky person to do this the last two or three times we've had to do it steve was with me one time and other than that i did it by myself what I would recommend is we get them copies of it. Eric presents it. Sarah, can we, uh, we can produce a copy which shows the changes redlined or whatever the right word is, right? More or less. <laughs> no, I mean, I can. What I did was I, the copies that you have there are highlighted. I can go back and put in the original wording. I have to tell you that, that this document by now is a mess of track changes. It's just horrible. So I was trying to simplify it by just simply highlighting the information that you guys change. It's not that much. That's fine. I will put All I want to say to them is, what it said here are the changes. You don't need to focus on every sentence of okay. this document. You can certainly read it over at your leisure and get back to us and give any the questions. But In the copies that you have there, the high, the, I didn't print them in color, but if I did, uh, everything that is highlighted is, is the changes that you've made as a board. Okay, so I, I think that's fine. Showed the root, yeah. And as for Cheryl, who is also an employee here, I think Dorinda and I can give her a copy. She, I, don't, she, I don't think she has any interest in coming to me. Okay, well. I'd be happy to meet with her if, need be, if she has any concerns or questions or any of them for that, uh, for that matter. But yeah, that sounds, that sounds good to me, Eric, if you think that can work. Great. I don't see, at least in this copy, Sarah, I just see the only highlighted section 
that's shaded is just the overtime where we picked up? No, that's actually, that was in blue. Maybe, but I can print it out for you in color and then you can see. Um, yeah, I may, maybe I just skipped over it. But I, I think didn't. that's because that one was, let me just print it in color. Really. Uh, are you guys going to go back to section 29, so, or are you not? No, we're going back. We've got to circle back to the overtime, yes. So I'll start out the discussion by saying since our last meeting, I've given this a lot of thought, and uh, Sarah gave me an overview, and she can give us an overview of what she found out that other towns are doing, which is basically all over the map, some ordering on the illegal, I would tell you. <laughs> In the way they administer their payroll, no surprise there. I think what, I think what we need to do is what's fair and right for our town and our road crew and not necessarily follow what somebody else is doing. And the other thing, having thought a lot about it, uh, Randy in particular, and thought about the potential extra cost of allowing people to have their sick time and or vacation times count towards their overtime, I guess what I've come down to think is if there's somebody who's abusing that and taking advantage of it, like saying, I want to take every Friday off during the summer and we need them to be working because we need to get the job done, that's the responsibility of a road forum to manage that. And yes, there is the possibility of a small unbudgeted expense in a way, except the way we budget our overtime is always a crapshoot anyway. Just we just you know, budget what we think is the right amount based on our past experience, and sometimes it's enough, and sometimes it isn't quite enough. So, yes, I suppose you could say by somebody doing that, we might be paying out a few hours of overtime that we otherwise wouldn't pay, which I think is true, we might be. But if this is more and more the standard practice, and also if it's recommended to us by Eric, who's the one who's gonna to have to administer it, I'm in support of making that change, but I don't know how everybody else feels. And it, I'm sorry, I was shuffling the papers. Exactly what was the change? Please. Short, just a short. Well, the, the, the change is that now, correct me if I'm wrong, Eric and Dorinda, but right now, sick time and PTO does not count towards the calculation of overtime. So if you take two hours on a Tuesday to go to a doctor's appointment, and then by Sunday, you've worked 44 hours, including those two sick hours that you were paid for. You get paid overtime for those hours. Whereas now, in our policy, you would not get paid overtime for those two hours. Correct. Okay. So that, I think, in a nutshell, is the difference. And I can understand why... Uh, people who are subject to overtime and paid overtime would think it was unfair that they weren't allowed to use the time that they're entitled to, which they obviously are entitled to use, but that it wouldn't count towards the overtime. And if I think we're making a little bit of a change in favor of the road crew, so be it. That's not a bad thing, I don't think. And it's up to, up to Eric and Victor and all of us, if need be, to manage that. And if it's being abused, we can change it. So the proposal as presented doesn't just cover those hours. It instantly pays overtime for anything worked outside of normal business hours. So if the over work, 40 hours. No. The proposal was anything outside of I said as long as you cover your 40 hours with either physically working, holiday, a vacation day, sick day or personal day. All all those days are paid out at your normal rate of pay. And they're all budgeted. All those days are all budgeted. So the 
And if you don't have vacation time or personal time or sick time, well, then you're SOL. Sure. The policy as presented would immediately pay out over time for any hours on the weekend, any hours if the workday was from 7 to 3, it would instantly pay out if they came in at 6 o'clock in the morning or if they worked till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so it's not just the if they left for a two-hour doctor's appointment. The proposal as put forward instantly pays overtime for any of those other hours that are worked outside Correct. of whatever the, the, whatever the policy or whatever the, the business hours established yep. for the road yep. crew yep. are there now. So for me, but they still, but they still have to work the 40 hours though. No, because they could use their sick time to fill in for those 40 hours. Correct. But, but I'm would, saying that's, but I'm saying that's legitimate time. What, what I don't want to have happen is if somebody comes in two hours early in the morning for whatever reason and works a 10 hour day when the normal work day is eight hours, I don't want to pay overtime for those two hours. And that's what I thought the original proposal was. The day it's by a, day. It's a, if, if you're scheduled eight hour day and you work 10 because of a tree down or whatever, well then you should get overtime. But if you're working a, a scheduled eight hour day and nothing happens and you can go home on normal time then there's no overtime. You don't make up overtime. Right. So for me, so I, and I apologize, I wasn't able to get back to you uh, this last uh, period of time. Uh, I didn't want to bother you over the weekend and my week was extremely busy. I did work up some scenarios and I took a two week payroll cycle. Yeah. I ran numbers based on the current policy as it sits. Yeah. I used Eric's um, pay, vacation, the whole nine yards. And for me, it comes down to the fact that it's unbudgeted. And um, if, there's a, if there's a change here, just let me finish. Yeah. If there's a change here, then the way we manage and budget for that those expenditures needs to change as well because the reality for me is you know so for Eric let's just say there's he pulled we budgeted 225 hours of overtime he used 260 yeah um, so I don't feel like those budgeted hours are you know off base um, if you moved just a third of their personal time potentially into that category, you're paying overtime for that. It's almost a six thousand um, dollar difference for that one person. And that's not going back and saying every weekend hour that they work is automatically overtime. It's we had to make some general assumptions and and said okay, well if they worked through the winter time and they used a third of their vacation time or holiday time or sick, no, holiday is I left alone. So assuming no holidays changed whatsoever and they didn't work on any holidays. Um, but their sick time, if they get earned, you know, 48 hours, there was a day of sick time that they used. There's, a, you know, 25% there. So roughly a third of their time, that's a $6,000 unbudgeted hit. And for me, that's what, it, that's what it comes down to. Except help me out, I, I get what you're saying, but if, if the problem is that people are using sick time when they shouldn't use sick time, that's an administrative problem, number one, I'll get, I'll get to Eric. But number two, we, when we do the budget every year, we assume that a certain amount of sick time is gonna be used. Sure. We don't assume it's all gonna be used, because generally it isn't. This is all being but we put in some it's kind of plug number. It's just shifting. It's just shifting a portion of those into overtime rates instead of straight time rates. Yeah, but I think you think I, I'll, I'll recognize. I think you're thinking about it wrong because you're not shifting that time into overtime rates. But it gets carried over. You're, so if they're accruing it this year, they're carrying it into the next year. So oh, if wait. they don't use it this year, it's right. next year. Yeah, Eric, go ahead. You, once you use a vacation day or a sick day, it's gone. Sure. And you do accrue more, but you don't accrue based on how it's worked. You accrue based on pay period. 
So take your annual your annual allotment. Yep. And some of that gets pushed into overtime instead of but instead of straight pushing, time. Because you're getting paid out at your normal rate of pay. You're not. Yeah, you are. Those 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 overtime hours wouldn't be considered overtime hours under the current policy. But so the, that, that the aside, amount of hours aside, your overtime hours are the Saturday you work, not the day you took off a of vacation day. That's paid out at normal rate of pay. The, the amount of hours that are paid at overtime rates mm -hmm. changes during this policy, correct? I don't see how it would, because you, you, you budget for 225 hours. Perfect example. I've got 216 hours of overtime, okay? I didn't take any vacation during those, those weeks that I had that overtime. If I were to take any vacation during those weeks, those overtime hours wouldn't have changed. They would go up. How did they go up? Because those hours- I don't increase my overtime. Those hours that you use to fill your eight hour day would shift from, if say you worked a Saturday and you took that time off during the week, those eight hours on the weekend then become overtime hours. Of course, but that's not my vacation day. So, so where, where does the monetary difference come from? Your vacation is paid out at your normal rate of pay, not overtime pay. The, the, the so the your, of, your, your actual physical worked overtime hours does, does not change. Your physical worked hours, which go into the calculation for overtime, does change. Yeah, Therefore, you, that's where the monetary your, difference that your you're looking for. is paid out at your normal rate of pay, which is your normal rate of physically worked hours. The number, and also, you use that up, so you cannot use that up later in the year. It's gone. The it's sheer gone number of hours in that overtime calculation change. So there is a monetary difference to the town. Therefore, the extra money in your paycheck that you're fighting for, if there's no change in how it's paid, then where does the monetary difference come from? The monetary difference comes from it allows them to get their overtime while still using some of their vacation time. And they don't get screwed out of going to a doctor's appointment and losing four hours of overtime. Correct. That's exactly my point, that they, the monetary difference comes from the shift. Right, so in other that. words, what you're saying So where is you would normally get paid. Hey, 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 wait, 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 just respond. let me finish. Okay. Where you would normally get paid straight time for those hours worked, you're now getting paid overtime hours, and that's the monetary difference. Right, because you don't want to pay overtime. Has nothing to do with paying Well, overtime. that's what it is, because you're you hoping that someone takes a day off so they lose their overtime. So they gotta be paid straight time for a Saturday or Sunday. For me personally, it has to do with the fact that it's not budgeted. If this, if the town residents passed something that says, we're happy if you guys work 500 hours of overtime and the work's there, then, then buy out all your, pay out all your stuff on overtime rate, I don't really care. It has to do with the unbudgeted piece of this for me and and all these hours are budgeted. Now how can you how can you say that it's not budgeted? That he's got two hundred and sixteen hours. That is nine hours less than we budgeted. He's got so many days of sick leave, we pay it straight time. If he takes that time off, that's still budgeted. The calculation for overtime changes and the monetary value of what's paid out changes. That's what's unbudgeted. So in it, I'm not sure if I understand. So you basically ran some scenarios and you just looked at the straight numbers and you saw the fact that with what we currently have versus with this change, so you're just looking at the numbers. You're not, I mean, you ran some scenarios and, and you're just looking at the numbers. So if we combine what you're saying with what Eric's saying with what Peter's saying, if, what if we approved it and watched to see the dollars? That's and right, then we right. came back and changed it. Because what I hear Peter saying is that we're giving a little and we see that this is a this could maybe not a worst case scenario situation, but it's a it's a scenario a possible scenario. Sure. That may or may not happen. 
So I would, I would say let's roll with the changes and see if that happens. And then we can go back. And maybe if we are way over budget, when we go back, we can carry over the allotment over, you know, we can spread it out a little bit. That so just I'm not I'm not following the last piece of what you well, said. So we can't change this year's budget. Correct. So say we pass this change and over the next six months we see that we have overextended ourselves with overtime because of this change. Um, then we can decide as a group, is that palatable? Will we maybe for next year's budget, we um, pass that shortfall plus what we anticipate for the following year. Or are we going to roll it back and go back to, you know, square one? I'm just trying to see if there's a compromise because I don't really see anybody changing their mind. And um, and I think that Peter's position at the outset that we're given a little bit and that's not a bad thing. And if it becomes a bad thing then we can revisit. So I think there's another piece of this that maybe I'm misunderstanding Peter's stance versus what was proposed. Okie dokie. It's, Sorry, if, was... if we move forward with any kind of change, mm -hmm. I think we need to be crystal clear on where your mind was at coming into this and yeah. what the actual proposal mm -hmm. is. Because my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. my understanding is that you set hours from 7 o'clock to 3 o'clock for the five days of the week. Mm -hmm. Anything worked out of those hours, whether you work eight hours in that day or you could come in for two hours, and if they're outside of those, those hours, then those, then those times get paid as overtime. Am I correct there? Sort of. Your, your initial eight-hour, your window, let's just say, we'll use the number 73, okay? That has to be covered with time. Actual time. With actual time. With well, PTO. It doesn't have to be work time. That's what I'm saying. Actual time. Actual time that's paid out your normal rate of pay. Okay? That window. If you work over because of whatever on a Saturday or Sunday, or even that day, let's just say you had a doctor's appointment in the morning or whatever, you know then yes, but you've got to cover your eight hours. You still have to cover your 40 hours. You can't get over, you can't get overtime if you're not covering your 40 hours of normal rate of pay. Right. What I am not proposing, I don't believe Eric is proposing, is we had a discussion early on in this discussion whether we were going to do an overtime calculation day by day. So if you put in an extra hour on a Thursday, you've got an hour's overtime. So my understanding was that was exactly what this proposal well, was. Well, if, no. if you're covered your 40 week, 40 hours for the week. You don't get any overtime until you have 40 You're still going to cover your 40 hours. No double dipping. Correct. Yeah. You still have to cover your 40 hours. Right. Per week. Per week. Right. So it comes down to a management Correct. issue then. Mm -hmm. And whether or not somebody says, hey, I've got a doctor's appointment, I will still want to work those hours, can I work after the work hours are done? Well, I mean, if we're not, if we are as a group not having to work after hours because of whatever, then, well, then you're not making your time up. Now, if we have a snowstorm and we're plowing. Winter time's a little, you're right. Yeah, or, or, or let's just say a tree's knocked down in the middle of the road at, after hours, or whatever, you know? You still have to cover your 40 hours. Right. You can't do it without covering your 40 hours. You still got to have 40 hours. The difference is that we count paid time off and sick time as, normal. as regular hours, which we don't do now. So here's a question. If I took two hours off for a doctor's appointment and I filled those two hours in, um, is it you're just using time allowable to the hit at an eight hour mark during that day? I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. He's saying you're not gonna allow he's saying, let's let's say Randy Randy comes to you, Randy is your yep. best greater operator, which I'm sure he would be. Yeah. And uh, he comes to you and says, I've got a doctor's appointment, I can't come in until ten o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock in the morning, or whatever the time is. He's gonna take two hours off. But I'll stay 
Well, see, two hours. That's a different scenario, and I would say, that's fine. You can stay two hours, but you don't need to take your time off in the morning. That's the difference. Yeah. You don't need to make up overtime hours. So we, there are plenty of overtime hours out there. You do not need to make any up. I don't want any more than I have to, but I'm going to take every bit that I have because I have to be there. I'm not going to make stuff up to work. Trust me, I'd rather be home. That's the big difference. Well, then that's that's what that policy comes down to. Is if you do move forward with this, it comes down to a management issue. Correct. Yeah. And well, what's, what's going to be allowable and what's not going to be allowable? Well, yeah. I mean, you're not going to you're not going to say, well, I'm using two hours to go to my doctor's appointment and then stay two hours to get overtime. Well, that's not how it works. I mean, that just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, you'd be surprised at what well, you see out there. To me. <laughs> when you give somebody a little bit, you'd be surprised at what they try to say. That's where it comes down to managing the people and managing the situation. Right. Yes, Serena. Um, vacation. We keep talking about these doctor's appointments. Are vacation time pre-planned? Or wonder if somebody wanted to fill in those two hours with vacation time. Vacation time, because... If you're going to start talking about putting in these hours willy-nilly, whether it's vacation time or mm -hmm. sick time, then it better be called something different than vacation time and sick time. You really need to you change might, the term. Well you might as well go to TTL. Right. And, 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 and usually, usually I try to do it within reason. I mean, we got to be, we got to make sure that stuff's done. And, and I haven't had an issue yet, but if there becomes an issue of, you know, people say, well, I, I need to take the day off last minute. Usually I know ahead of time. Usually I'm told, hey, uh, next Thursday I got this going on. Okay, yeah, that's fine. You know, and we can plan around it. I haven't run into an issue where it's last minute going, hey, I'm taking today off. I, I, I have just it. think you need I, to I just haven't run into that. that because it's something. They've been really good about that. Well, in the way and that ties back into my conversation or my comments in the last meeting where, you know, how that time is used and, and you know, sick time really is different than personal time and it's really different than vacation time. And, right. um, you know, personal time, you know, and it's for personal use. It's something comes up unplanned. Hey, sorry, but I know you don't have any notice, but I got to use some personal mm -hmm. time. Vacation time in a lot of places, you got to have it approved two weeks ahead of time, and, and I don't no. want to get to that point. No, it's just, I just work it out with it, work it, it out. Know, so far, it's worked. I mean, we've been able to manage it, and it's, it hasn't been an issue. If it becomes an issue, well, then there's there's a different approach about it, but it hasn't been. And it hasn't been an issue since Eric's been here. But at one point, people during the summer, when it was ten-hour days, they were working eight and on vacation or sick every for two hours every day. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the kind of stuff we want to avoid. Well, Peter. That's yeah, that's, that's, I have to step that's true. What Dorinda is saying is true. But I think as a board and as a treasurer, we've hired Eric, we've trusted him. We should let him do his job and stay out of it. Let him decide that. If we don't like the way things are going, we can then it's my butt on the line. Right. Because I think you're causing a lot of dissension in the, well. Who, oh, I am? Yes. Why? Well, I've comments like you said last week about, we'll fire them. If somebody refuses to do their job, Victor, I'm sorry, but I, I have very little tolerance for that. And as an employer, if somebody refuses, flat out refuses continually to it's do like their job. It's like somebody in the face. They should be fired. You know how good it is to get help. You know what? If somebody you guys, you two guys, constantly, constantly. Wait a minute. What two guys? You I have, and I. Have, I have never you, criticized this department. That is not true. That is not Mine true. are just my comments. It's not are just him. Clarity. It, I, I just had a quick question. So going back to page eleven, these are the changes in what in what Sarah passed out. That is no, that's the okay, not so the changes we've done. So have we? Is um, has yeah. the proposed language been put before? No. The group. Okay. No. So we'll have to come back to this anyway to actually vote on it. Correct. Well, depending on what it takes to implement that language, but I would suggest we need to be careful how we 
Okay. Right, that. So I'm going to suggest that we don't vote on it tonight. Plus, I'd like Liz to be part of the process as well. Okay. All right. So that. Um, so uh, I would. So are you, Do you need a, a motion to pass everything other than the overtime section? No. Let's okay. wait. Okay. And unless anybody disagrees. Sorry, doing that. That's so, okay. I'd like to go so, back to the statement that Victor made. I have to add this. I ask for clarity purposes because it always comes down when we're running payroll how things are being interpreted and that. I'm only asking these questions for clarity. I am not saying how you should be paying these, how the orders, orders are done. I'm trying to bring up facts of things that have happened and I want clarity before we move forward. Fine. I take, I take exception to the fact that you're, you're saying that I'm attacking these guys and creating dissension here. I'm, I'm sorry if I have a differing opinion than you do, Victor, and I think, people should, be, I think people should be held it's accountable. Not, it's not my opinion. But at the end of the day, when we look at these payroll charts, mm -hmm. and it's in the policy to, mm -hmm. to calculate this in a, in a certain manner, mm -hmm. we need to be held to that standard. There's not a Correct. person in this room, and there's some out, that not in a meeting have brought this up but I am the only one that dares to say anything. That you guys got to step back and take it, you know, take a step For back. For what? Holding people accountable to the no, policies and the methodologies at hand? No. That's that's it's, where this sits. You guys, you guys are you guys are still in the last administration, and you're making him pay for it. And. You have felt that way, right? There, there are times it feels like I'm, trying, I'm being micromanaged. That's right, and that's the reason I to what to what level? I'd like to know other than other than well, I, I will tell other you. than holding people accountable to the methodologies and the policies at hand. I would like to understand exactly how you feel like you're being micromanaged. Well, I'll tell you this for a fact. Last last time we were here, there was two things that really upset me that you said. Okay. One was the fact that overtime is a privilege, not a right. That hit kind of hard. Number two, fire people. I understand what you're saying. I get it 100%. The problem we run into is that when you have a situation that we do where we have CDL drivers, even if they're not, but we do, and you call them in and they say, I can't come in, I've been drinking, you can't do a dang thing about it. That's a different situation well, than I'm what just Victor saying, put that's forward. All they, that's to, all to they have to that's do. a different situation than the situation that was put forward that warranted my comments from Victor. Well, the, that has nothing to do with the scenario that was put at hand to, to cause me to fair, say that. Fair enough. I'm just telling you, it hurt a little bit. I think I think that that everybody that's that's an employee is held to a standard, and if they flat out refuse, which was the situation that was put at hand in the last meeting, continually refused to do their job, not because they were drinking and they were called in in an unexpected time, because that's a totally different situation, then yes, I think those people should be held accountable. Right. Okay, fair enough. Okay, Bridget. I just wanted to say that we can't micromanage feelings. I mean, what I'm hearing Eric say is that during conversations he's had a feeling that he's being micromanaged. So we can't actually ask him to, you know, point out A to B what what brought that feeling about. I think all we can do is hear him and try to, as Victor said, be more aware. I don't think he's asking that. I don't think that, um, again, I think that um, we just need to hear him say what his feelings are. So all I'm going to say, guys, and I've said this before, is we need to listen to each other, we need to be respectful of each other, and we need to be polite to each other. And that isn't to say people, including me, don't get upset from time to time. That can happen. Oh, but, you know, I believe everybody sitting around in this table, everybody in this room is here trying to do their best for the best interest of the town of Middlesex. And as long as we keep that in mind, we can't get in too much trouble. And the last thing I'll say on this subject tonight is, um, we need to put this behind us. We've made some meaningful changes to this policy. We need to implement them. And if we go ahead with this change to the overtime, and if it turns out to be uh, as bad as you project, Randy, 
there are basically two things that have to go on. Number one, if we're going to continue that policy, we definitely have to budget for the amount of money that we expect it to be. Um, and uh, number two, uh, if it truly isn't going to work and it's unsustainable, we need to change it. And I, and I would be the first one, and I would recommend that Eric, when he presents this to the road crew, lets them know that. I mean, I always told them, you know, these are the changes, this is the policy for now, but if things aren't working or there's a problem that this policy doesn't address, we're going to change it. In, in, in all fairness to Eric, uh, Eric and I have talked about this a lot. We discussed this a lot. And Eric said, and correct me if I'm wrong, that it's basically what Bridget said. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work. I actually said that. Let's just try it for a year and see what it does. Right. If it isn't? I think, I think that we'll I, I have a, a, a true strong feeling that we can manage this and have it not cost the town any money, any extra money. I truly believe that. Guys, might I propose having, sorry to interrupt, might I propose having the, the treasurer run these numbers in, in some scenarios based on our overtime hours? Um, you know, we can look back in payroll um, to see weekends, uh, an average weekend time. If we're talking a 40 hour week, you know, a guy can be on vacation essentially for 40 hours, get called in and make overtime where before he would basically not be able to accrue overtime. He would just have less of a deduction of, of his accrued hours. But it would seem to me, rather than taking the, the approach of, well, let's, let's give it a try. It, it seems in, in, not in the best interest of, of the taxpayers to roll the dice on it without really knowing exactly. I, I think we could get a pretty good judge on it, hypothetically through Dorinda, and looking back at some payroll numbers, and I apologize, Dorinda, it's, it takes some footwork, but would that not be a, a better way of, of looking at this before we decided to just say, hey, let's give it a try, rather than doing an honest job with the treasurer who takes care of payroll and, and things like that beforehand? So, Paul, my only concern about that is it's all based like the projection that Randy did. You know, you got to put a number saying, OK, how many days of extra overtime are there going to be? And that's a crapshoot. So, you know, we do, we always every year when we do the budget, we put in what we believe is a reasonable amount of overtime and just a little bit of extra. So I, I have a suspicion that we will probably not overspend our budget, but we might in that category. But. You know, I think until we try it and let Eric administer it and see how it goes, we're not going to get a real taste of what it's going to be. I mean, we can run projections. We can run projections whether Randy does them or Dorinda does them or I do them or whoever does them. We can run projections that show all kinds of things based on the assumptions we make. And Randy, I know you made those assumptions in good faith. I'm not. I'm not saying you didn't. I'm just saying. Just got to be transparent about what the assumption is. That's right. Yep. And I, I will add this as well. It's just not, it's not just salary that's that's changed either. It's you know what goes into Veemers and their retirement account because that's based off of what we pay. So as we pay out more overtime, um, everything, everything else too. goes up too. Yeah. Like well, I, I mean, like I said, I will have probably the max amount of overtime because I always have. I feel. I always need to be there when things are going on because that's some, the managerial role that there is. Unless, for whatever, if it's something small or whatever, I get it. But if we got a storm going on, I'm around. You know, you got to make sure everybody gets back. You got to make sure everything is good. You know, that's my responsibility. Um, so I can tell you that my numbers really won't change. So, uh, I think enough for tonight. The question is, do we want to approve this policy with the exception of the overtime, or do we want to wait uh, for the next meeting? What we, don't want to, we don't want to accept your, your proposal or the proposal. Well, we have to see the actual language. Yeah. This isn't the actual language, Nick. That was one of my questions. Yeah, but we've well, got to get the real language. So Eric's, Eric's proposal has to be inserted, and then we can approve it. Okay. That makes sense. May I try yes. to, I'll take a stab at what you say. And um, 
put it into the put it into the overtime section and then circulate the entire revised policy. You guys can see if it's right. You can even contact me over the week to, and then you can vote on it at the, at the next meeting. How about that? At least you'll have words. Right. I'd love it if we went ahead and passed everything else and then we can bang bang on them. Would you like to make that motion? I would love to make that motion. You didn't want to wait for Liz? Yeah. Oh, I thought you okay. said you wanted to wait I'm, for Liz. Right, you guys might, it, I don't, it screws up my reporting if you say part of it was reported on one oh, day okay. and part of it was passed on another day. I need one day where it was passed. All right. All right. I'll be, I, I'm we'll wait. That. That's, that's Thank fine. You that Thank you. That's fine. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So uh, I'm going to suggest in deference to the to the highway department that we uh, listen to the volunteer fire department. They're here and we're behind a little bit on our agenda. So if you guys don't mind, uh, yep, we'll hear from the fire department now. OK, ready? Uh, ready to go. So yes, um, first, I'm going to do a shortened part, not go over every single call uh, because we have some other stuff to discuss. <clears throat> So we have eight calls this past period, uh, three mutual aids out, one in. Um, our max number of responders is eight, men is three. We jumped up to five and a quarter uh, average, so that's a big jump. Engine one's out five times, engine six out one time, tanker one out five times, rescue one out one time, and truck 14 not out. So we had three grass woodland fires, uh, one search and rescue, which I'll go into a little bit further. Uh, medical manpower assist, um, a vehicle rollover on the interstate, tractor fire, and a lightning strike. Um, the, the tractor fire and lightning strike in Moortown. And one of the uh, woodland fires is in Northfield. So um, as far as other stuff, we did hazmat training. We finished washing off uh, Wood Road and Morton Road. All five vehicles are getting inspected this month. As far as purchases, uh, we're getting four new rolls of uh, two and a half inch. We haven't gotten new two and a half inch in the 19 years I've been on the department. It's time to start getting new stuff. And we're getting a fitting for engine six that allows us to go off the side and use the five inch lot hard sleeve so we can get into Shady Rail easier and we're not having to lift as high as going off the back end. Um, <clears throat> Bass Squad, we had nine calls. Um, so the station issue, which you may have heard about, the, the station was, I'll say breached. There was no damage. What the, it probably was is we have two personnel doors on either side of the building. And the one on the, as you're looking at it, the one on the left side almost never gets used. Um, so what conceivably could have happened is somebody went out that door and it didn't latch. Um, we apparently have been having some guests down in the, in the area with tents. Mm -hmm. um, so they must have gone around and checked the doors and found one that they could get in. There's no damage in this station. The only thing they rifled through was the back of the rescue um, through the medical kits, which my, my thought process is they were probably looking for drugs because it looks like an ambulance. We don't carry drugs in there. The only drugs we have that are hidden away, Narcan and uh, That's the only thing that we as basics are allowed to measure. They did use, apparently used the shower, but didn't make a mess in there. And they apparently slept on one of the beds upstairs. Um, I went in yesterday morning at eight o'clock to take the tanker out to get inspected. So I got the engine and then the rescue. So I didn't see the back of the rescue being open. So I don't know if they were had been in there prior to that. Uh, Patty went down at four o'clock and saw the back of the rescue was open. So that's how we knew. We called PSP. The trooper came down, uh, tried to take fingerprints, and took our statements. I, I'm, he was going to put out a public release, a news release, in case somebody saw something. I'm not over. I, I'm not really expecting anything to come from it other than we've, we've ordered outside cameras and we're going to look at doing inside cameras um, because we've never had that, we've never had this issue before, but obviously with people 
in the neighborhood, that seems to be an issue we need to, to deal with. Plus, we're going to make sure all the doors are shut before we leave each time, or locked. <clears throat> um, so that's, that's that issue. As far, any questions on that? So there's no alarm down there, right? No alarm, right. no cameras. There's never been a... It's never been an issue. Sure. No. Right. No. This is the first time. Um, now on to the search and rescue for the 24th of May. Um, apparently, the state police got called somewhere around 5 p.m., between 5 p.m. and 5.30. Um, that Joe Picard was missing. We didn't get called out till 11.30 that night. The station became the command center for the whole uh, search and rescue event. We had, VSP was running the show. Uh, there were people from, organizations were uh, New England K-9 Search and Rescue. Us, of course. Um, uh, Waterbury Backcountry Rescue. Richmond Rescue. Um, we had later the next day, we had people coming in to, uh, or just residents walking the roads and stuff. We did call uh, Worcester over to bring two of their um, engines over. So what we did, what, what BSP wanted us to do was to set up basically ringing um, South Bear Swamp, East Bear Swamp, and that area up there along um, Shady Molly. Um, trucks parked, lights on, so that hopefully he would be attracted to that and come out. Mm -hmm. uh, we were out there from essentially midnight till about eight in the morning, was it, I think? Um, manning all those vehicles. We came back in, um, some of us then went out and drove, like I went up East Bear Swamp going house to house, talking to people, say, look in your buildings, keep your eyes out, walk the roads. Um, and continued around North Bear Swamp and down. I got done about noon. Um, some other people came in a little bit later in the afternoon. Then at um, 4.09, we got a call that he'd been found. Uh, New England K-9 Search and Rescue found him up the, off Molly, up PR2, back in the woods up in there. So he hadn't left that uh, area that we had been basically blocking off. Uh, and apparently had been wandering logging roads and maybe, uh, I don't know if the bass trail is up in there. I think there's some bass up in there. Um, spent the night out. It had rained. They found him, um, and he was transported to the hospital. But uh, considering the number of, oh, I forgot, uh, Border Patrol was there with their helicopter. I'm not sure if they were the one flying during the nighttime, but they no, were. that was dark. Okay. So uh, Border Patrol was flying during the day. So there are a lot of organizations involved with this, a lot of manpower uh, involved in it. The, um, the, I haven't talked to the VSP about it to see if our internet met what they needed because we only have, at best, uh, 15 MIPS down there because we're still on DSL. They haven't strung uh, cable down there yet. So that's something, there's a potential we're gonna need to and maybe get VSP on board to push to get cable put down there. It seems odd that Consolidate is there and we can't get cable <laughs> down there. Yeah. But um, the, I didn't hear any complaints that 15 MIPS was, was a problem, but if we get more computers and people attacking that 15 MIPS, it's not going to cut it. Uh, so there, were, there, weren't a lot of image, there wasn't a lot of imaging going on. They were doing maps and printing those out. Um, their comments for, from them that they I did get at the end of the day was uh, thanks for, for letting us be here, um, and it went well. So uh, that's the, the fill-in on that. Uh, there's more. Well, I would just I would just add you know great congratulations to all of you who were in, involved in that process. I have never seen such a robust response to any situation in our town in all the years as there was. I was I was impressed with the. Coordination. Right. It, it, it was just spot on. It was amazing. It really was amazing to watch. And a happy outcome. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I was surprised, but it was a long day. Oh, I'm sure. Long two days. I'm sure. Well, I think I think our department can be proud and our town can be proud of the uh, of the response and the coordination. They were impressed. And the state trooper.
I was just wondering if the family has to carry any costs for the search and rescue. I don't know. That's not that's VSP and that whole. Yeah, we don't know. The answer is normally no. Good. This isn't like the extreme rescue up in Mount Mansfield, for instance, where they try and mm -hmm. collect if people ski out of bounds or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is the first time. I can. I mean, we've had people who are missing for short periods of time, but we haven't had anything like this yeah, in all this the years that I've been around. Uh, so and hopefully, was, his family is paying attention and keeping an so eye on him. Yeah, it was just it was a, a freak of events and why it, how it happened. Um, normally, the, he's checked on every day, right? And, and they missed a day because of family stuff that had come up, and uh, so it was just and having grown up there. And actually, his father, having um, lived out in the swamp and logged so much, he he could have been back in that time period and wondering, thinking he was going to a logging site or something. So, it, it, when you get somebody at that point, you don't know what's right. You don't know what's going on. The only other thing I would say is I've known him for forty-five years, and if there's anybody who knows the backwoods of Middlesex. And, and, and there was part of the problem. And knows how to knows how to get along in the woods as well. So yeah. So yeah, that's um, we we were very proud of everybody in the department. Now for the rescue. So our our estimate was not a typo. It really was two hundred seventy nine thousand four hundred or whatever the amount was two hundred seventy nine five hundred ninety six. Um, and he sent me some numbers for other vehicles and. We don't want, even want to go to that. Uh, I mean, for what it costs for just a tank of raw and water, not even what we have now. Uh, the prices have just gone through the roof. So, but he did uh, tell us that North Hyde Park has a rescue vehicle that they are going to be selling because they, it's, it's a larger truck <clears throat> and a lot of their younger folks don't like to drive it. It's, to me, it's not that big. It's smaller than engine one, I mean, height-wise. Um, so they're getting a pickup truck with a, a cap and a rollout bed. So they're they're wanting to sell this. Um, it's 10 years old, so it will be the newest vehicle in our fleet. Um, they're hoping to get 145 for it. I might want to offer 135 and see where it goes. It's a five-person cab. It is a bigger vehicle than we originally were planning for the the F450. So it gives us a bigger safety presence up on the interstate. It already has a one blue light on the back, which we're now allowed to put a blue light on the back because when people see blue lights, they respect that and they move over. When they see red lights, ask screw it, it's fire department, I'll just keep on moving. Um, like I said, it has five person cab, they can all do all four or three of them are air pack seats, which means you can put four of them are. Uh, the, the only one that isn't is the uh, driver's seat. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then it has a, a box in the back with roll-up sides. The front compartment is goes all the way through. Um, the center compartments, it's one-third, two-third. So on the two-third side, it has a slide-out tray. The back two compart side compartments are one-third each. And then the center of the back is a roll-up, and there's that's where they have their um, hydraulic tools. And they have um, hose reels in there that are electric retract. It's got, um, it'll come with a, an electric reel that will keep the extension cord. The, the hydraulic hoses won't come with it. It'll come with all of its lights and sirens. They'll keep the radio, which isn't any good to us anyway, because they are on different freaks. It has um, four telescoping scene lights, which runs off a generator that's on the engine. So it's like a super alternator. So you flip the switch, it idles up the engine, turns on the generator, and now you run the lights, you can plug into it. Um, it, it is diesel, it's pre-DEF, so we don't have to deal with the DEF issue. Um, DEF. Um, and um, to me, it's, it, the size of it really gives us a much better protection footprint up on the interstate. There's the potential it could release a lot of um, taking the engine up, because if we don't need water, we really don't need the engine. One of the reasons the engine goes up is for shielding because of its size. And now we're even starting to take the tanker up for, to provide more protection um, 
for the scene downstream, uh, just because 2,000 gallons of water is a, a sizable barrier. Um, but this, this would give us a, a very good presence up there. It gives us opportunity, room to expand. Uh, as we know, Middlesex is not getting smaller. Um, so this will give us opportunity to expand rescue equipment. And um, I, my personal feeling is I think it's a really good deal for a, a vehicle that's not that old. Um, we're not going to find, I was wanting to hold out for new. When I saw the price of new, it's just like, it's insane. But I don't see us finding anything like this available. This is this is one of those things that happen when I come up, kind of like Engine Six when that popped up for thirty thousand. Um, this is, I think, a really good deal for the department. And while not when is it when is it going to be available? It's going to be available as soon as they get their pickup truck, which they're hoping end of summer, beginning of beginning of fall. Um, if we get the go ahead with it, they're not advertising it right now, waiting. to to hear the decision if we can go forward. Um, they also said if we want to bring you up there, to anybody from the select board up there to see it um, and ride in it, they're more than happy to do that. Um, it's just Eric and I have gone up, we've driven it. Um, Eric's experience with trucks and whatnot is what I really wanted to have him um, take a look at. It's an international chassis. Um, it's in really nice shape. The only thing that they've had to do, like we get all the maintenance records and all the books with it. The only thing they've had to do is it had gone in to get last April to get transmission fluid changed because it was nine years old. And while it was there, it got an engine light and they had to replace a wiring harness. And that was the only thing that they've had to do to it. If we, if we were to go the new route, we found one that was a little bit cheaper, but still a new route, we're looking at two years out to get one. Yeah. And that's from when we make the order, not from like, well, we think we're going to do, we got to get the approval, and the approval comes two or, two or three months down the road. It's from when we actually get the approval, sign the contract, then you're looking at two years. Yeah. It's just the, the way it is. So, Randy, what have we got in our capital plan now for that rescue? $125,000. Yep. Is what we've, what, when they did the inventory, that's what he put as a potential that's what I just, that's, value. That was pre-COVID time. Yeah, yeah. You know, things that just stupid, just stupid. It's just, it's like when I when I talk to the E1 rep um, for this area, he says normally he has uh, 10 to 12 trucks in contract at a time. Now he's got over 60 right now. Mm. So it's just coming out of COVID, everybody's buying stuff. And so the line to get stuff is ridiculously long and the prices have actually, have just gone astronomical. And um, we got the rescue was inspected, and we're having to get new um, gas tank straps, and you can't get OEMs anymore. So they're having to go find them elsewhere. So that truck is getting to the point it's unsupportable in maintenance stuff. Um, so we, and with the fact that we would get this, you know, in three, four months, um, the tires are on it, they're good, it has on spot chains are on, on it already. Um, so that we wouldn't have to do anything to it other than take the radio out of the rescue um, that should still be able to work so we wouldn't even have to to buy a new radio for it. And we actually have hydraulic tools to go in. Yes. Which were donated to us from the town of Alton. Board members? Yeah, I think... Uh, I think that's you know it, 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 it's a, that's a reasonable price and uh, if you read uh, if you read like in uh, even in Vermont Digger this morning there's many many towns looking for them and uh, like 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 he says it's uh, just uh, skyrocketing out of price so if you want to do anything I, I think it might be a good time to do it. Well, we'd have to figure out, you know, we'd have to figure out, this This gets back to the old, the the old thorny on? issue of our ARPA money that we need to spend at some point in time, and what are we going to spend it on, but, you know, we also have made it our practice to borrow money when we when we purchase major pieces of equipment, so we could borrow money and pay for it over five so years. So, or... my question to that is, if we borrow the money, or even if we use ARPA funds, 
since it's over, I believe, $10,000, is that the amount? It's a capital thing. Do we need to have a vote on it? No, the vote. way that works is you, we can borrow for one year and without a vote, but if you try to finance it for more than that, you'll have yeah. to have it. Vote. Yeah, but if, if you use ARPA money then to pay for it, then... We, yeah, we could always borrow for a year and then go out the second year if you got the right, that's what, right. That's right. That's what I was going to say. I mean, we can we can skin the cat on we, if we decide to go ahead. I just, uh, you know, we've gotten a lot of bad news about this rescue, and here's the first situation that I consider to at least be reasonable and possible. And uh, yeah, Randy. All right. So I just opened up the CIP, and it's a we had $140,000 as uh, estimated replacement with a uh, $125,000 uh, line in um, uh, PY25, so uh, in 2025, um, as, as the contribution that could potentially, that's when we were slipping, you know, the major replacement. So there might be some value to the existing truck, maybe next to nothing, I would guess. Yeah, we um, put it up for sale, and I don't, I, I, I mean, someone might want it for, you know, someone's work truck or something. I mean, it has a big block Chevy in it, so somebody may want it for that. But I just wanted to clarify that the replacement cost in the CIP is 140, not 125. Yep, thank you. And how much do we have? Nothing. Just started it, right? Yes. Yep. So I, I when do we need? When do we need to get back to them? So they know we're meeting tonight, and he wants to hear back if if it's a you're gonna you discuss it next meeting and make a decision. I'll tell him that, and he'll still not put it on the market. Um, but he's gonna want. I mean, they're they they want to sell it by the time they get their truck. So there's a lot of wiggle room. If we come and say, yeah, we want it, we got to work out the finance stuff. Then basically it's ours and um, they won't sell it and they'll continue to use it until they get their truck. Um, but I just, I, I can't foresee us finding something of that quality and that gives us a, a safety margin up on the interstate that really is significant. And I mean, our, our numbers are continually going up for our average response. Um, more people are taking pride in the department I think bringing a new rescue in just even increases that and becomes a potential recruiting point. So how do you, you, you indicated that uh, you'd like to buy it for 135 but I, I would, we'd probably, you know, I don't know, if, if you said you wanted it, you would be approving that 145 I just wanted to make that clear. His, his, his response to me is, I hope we can get 145, or we'd like to get 145 for it. Mm -hmm. That says to me there's some negotiation for right. price. So well, You can't go wrong by offering 135 and saying, what do you think? Can we do it for 135? And if it comes to 140, it's, we've, we've gone up, they've come down, and we're happy. Um, but my first offer would be 135. You could almost pay that much for a pickup truck today if you doll it up. <laughs> it's crazy, I'm telling you. It's well, that, crazy. yeah, and that's that's what we're we're looking at. And then well, I originally said that 125. That was we could have done it for one. I mean, we got the tanker for for 117. Um, so, but it's just gone absolutely berserk, and the, the time delay is just insane. Well, here's, here's what I would propose, board members. I would propose we get back to them, have Jeff get back to them and say, we are very interested. But we need a little time to think about this. We need a time to figure out how we're going to pay for it. And we will consider it at our next board meeting, which the date is still be, de be determined. We're going to talk about that in a little while, but it'll be the first meeting in July. Okay. Uh, was that, that makes sense to everybody? To I don't want to. I don't want to not get back to him. Right. And if he all of a sudden says, if he all of a sudden says, you know, I've got somebody barking up my tree right now who's willing to pay me 145, then maybe we have to have a special meeting. I don't know what we have to do. Liz will be back 
Is she coming back today or tomorrow, sir? You know? Wait. See, she's on route today. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's so so here. Do you want me to give a number or just say we're really interested and we'll and at the next meeting after Fourth of July? Yeah. Plant some seeds. Doesn't hurt to plant a seed. Mm -hmm. You know, can you do any better on the price? Would 135 get the get the deal done? You know, you're supporting. Uh, Supporting the fire service in Vermont, et cetera, et cetera. Spread it on as thick, spread it on as thick as you can. Um, what do you guys think? I'm sorry. Hey, you know, if all of a sudden he says, "Guys, I've really got to get 145," so if you're interested, it's going to be 145. Then we know that mm -hmm. at our next meeting. I have to tell you that I'm a little worried about the, the borrowing situation. Maybe Durant has got it under control. But if it's five years or less, we're, we, still need a, we still need a meeting. No, but you don't for one year. You sure? Mm -hmm. But then you have to put it up for a vote. If you want to, either that or that's why we always kept doing one year loans. Right. And previously. And then, um, but we can do a one year loan without voter approval. But I think we, I think we really did our due diligence on finding this one. Yeah. Yeah. It saves me from meeting with another salesman. Well, thanks for all your work chasing this down. Uh, anything else? Uh, those are the two big things. Do you have any other questions for the fire department? Mm -hmm. Keep up the good work. That's that's not a question. We're we're trying. We're doing our best. I know you are. Thank you. Okay, okay. highway department. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, Shady Rail was reclaimed the other day, last week. So the paving project is underway. Um, I I had gotten a quote or asked him to look at the section of Tierra Street that's fallen apart, and um, they said that they would be willing to do that. 400 foot section for the same uh, unit number as they did they are for Shady Road. But what section was that, Eric? I didn't read uh, From Terrace Street oh, to uh, to uh, West Hill, or East Hill. Oh, Sorry, what I affectionately call the no man's land. Right. 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 Everybody um, stopped short of where it actually ends. <laughs> and, um, so I rough, my rough numbers, it's roughly. 140 ton, so you're looking at right around just under twelve thousand uh, dollars. If it's something you want to do, I can let them know. If not, that's fine too. But, and who is them? Uh, Pike. Okay. Yep. What's the number, Pike, Eric? Uh, the number I I measured it. It's 460 feet by 24 feet. Okay. So you're looking at roughly around 140 ton of mix. Give or take. Did they give timing on? They're when be, they would work it in? Uh, they'll do it the same time they do uh, Shady Road, which is going to be at the end of July. And of course, we have nothing in the budget for that. No. Like I said, I just... Right. I said, hey, would you look at this while you're here? Yeah. <laughs> is there any chance we're underspent now? <laughs> yeah. And they could... Uh, we could work some magic on timing with the transition between this year and next year? Aaron and Victor, if, if I, a quick question, um, I've, I've actually seen water coming out of the top of a couple of those telephone poles where water's coming down Garand Hill and, and coming out of one of the service conduits at the, to at the top of the telephone poles. So it's super wet there that we know how, how bad it is. Peter, you you likely know how terrible it is. I'm a little, I'd be a little bit apprehensive of just throwing pavement over that without trying to do at least a little bit of, of sub-base work. I, I'm definitely on board with capitalizing on them being here, but without without trying to do a little bit of sub-base work there, I feel like we're throwing good money at that bad um, just because of how wet and, and how bad it is over there. I don't know if Vic and Eric would would echo that same thought or, or roll the well, dice on that. 
A house there, I believe, and Eric helped me out. Yeah, they did some reconfiguring of their driveway and diverted the water down into a culvert. It used to come right down that driveway and just pour across the road. No, no, when he, no, no I, I can, can, I can clarify, clarify this, but he said, said that he would do everything for the same unit price, price and which, which would also include the reclaiming. Well, the reclaiming is, is a dollar seventy-five a square yard, yard so, so we're, we're not talking, talking you know, big money. money. And the equipment's, equipment's still at the shop, so, so it's just a matter of them moving it over to, to there, which, which is, is an option. I think. I think Paul, what Paul said, I think maybe, uh, and correct, correct me if you're wrong, wrong if you're still there, Paul, uh, we might want to put, put some under green in there, over on top of that hill. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Vic, and, and, and more just, you know, I, I think it's a great opportunity to capitalize on you know, on, on what I would consider savings and mobilization costs and, and the cost of pavement going up. I think it's a good idea if we if we could justify a little bit of time to, to either put some under drainage in, even, you know, a, a layer of road fabric and, and maybe a six inch lift of, of some nice inch and a half gravel or, you know, something state spec. Um, I feel like it, it would be worth our little bit of time and additional money to capitalize and really try and stretch out that pavement just just because I see how how bad it is there and I haven't been over there to see that things have been changed and I'm just looking at the uh, the amount of groundwater that that's coming down that hill like I said I've, I've literally seen water coming out of the top of a telephone pole um, conduit like a fountain so there, there's a significant amount of, of groundwater coming down there um, so just more of like a long-term perspective I, I think it'd be worth looking at Okay. We'll take a look at it, Paul. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. So here we go again, guys. Use of ARPA funds. I don't know. It's an un, it's an unbudgeted item. We have to find the money. We have to find the money somewhere if we're going to do it. It does seem like a good opportunity. I would say again, if it was up to me, I'd rip that all up and put it back to gravel. Well, that's the other option. I mean, you can. Uh, I mentioned that the other day when we were driving through there. Is you don't have to pave it as far as it is. I mean, you would do from the bad spot in, in the dip. Mm -hmm. You just have gravel farther down. It's not an ideal choice, but it is a possibility. Wasn't well, that what happened from Portal down to there? Wasn't that all paved at one point and they ripped it out? From, from just past Portal yes, down? Yes, right. it was paved up past Portal. Portal. Right. Yeah. right. It's just unbelievably how unbelievable and you know we've ignored that for a long time hopefully thinking that Montpelier would take care of it <laughs> but our strategy didn't work but they don't own it well that, that's always subject to dispute but anyway mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I tried to tell them they owned it at one time I didn't get very far no we went out and looked at it with Dan Perry so I mean right. I guess the question is you know, as as a board, how do we feel about this? What do we want to do? Yes, Bridget. So this is this this is the spot just down from Lindsay's house. Yes. 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 Uh, I think it's really dangerous because everybody coming down the hill swoops left. Correct. And it's a blind corner. So I was just wondering, um, even though to tell you the truth, if you go if you stay right, it's not that bad. You just slow down. I Except in the winter when it's all a shoe, glare oh, ice. Yeah, yeah, this is true. <laughs> but right now, but I think that um, going to the question of turning it back to gravel, what is the annual cost there projected out versus having it, putting out the money to have it paved now and then continuing to maintain? I think the last time we had that conversation, Victor said it's cost more over the lifetime to do gravel to do gravel than it does for pavement. Okay, I remember it. Correct there. Mm -hmm. if to do to do the proper maintenance, correct. Yeah. But we also probably will have to put some gravel in there and do some under drain or do some work. Maybe I mean we certainly got to look at that. Right, we got to look at it. Yeah. Whatever we do, if we're going to do it and consider it, let's do it right. So we do a good job and. Yeah, I mean, for the amount of money that we're talking, if it truly is that twelve, well, four hundred to fifteen thousand dollars, you know, it's uh, you start adding in, you know, it's, if you if you 
crew has the time and you know we've, it sounds like we've got some gravel kicking around that we could potentially you know use in that location i mean i would support whether it has to come from arpa or you know if we we got lucky gravel, and we had an underspend this year or something like that uh finding a way to make this happen we might might be able you're, you're only talking two weeks we could be in the next week and then, right and then we got eighty thousand dollars Is that a class two for a section of right? That would be class two. I was looking at the AOT map, it appears. I believe it is. So you couldn't take it down to correct without doing a deep classification. Well, let's take it under, let's take it under advisement. I mean, I guess we've got some expensive decisions to make at our next, uh, Jesus. board meeting we guess what we just happen to be setting the tax rate so it's an appropriate time to consider <laughs> such things i mean it just seems like i know that's the way i feel it's just one thing after another it's a rescue truck here a little bit of pavement there and you know pretty soon you've spent three hundred thousand dollars pretty quick we've got another, we've got, yeah it's a appropriate time we've got another uh expenditure possibility yeah but we may have the money to do it. Oh, wait, you're adding to the list. Your favorite, to your favorite topic, Peter. Uh-oh. Uh, and what topic is that? Mike I came Jason? across the 2010 trailer for 2500 bucks. Oh. What do you find, you said? It's good. Top is just like new. 2500 bucks. You came across a what for 2500 bucks? 20-ton trailer. A 20-ton trailer. Person to person? Something that... Uh, I looked at it. Kind of work. No, I looked at it. It appears to be holding air on all eight tires. The treads don't look bad. The lights don't appear to be broken. I don't know how the wiring is. Uh, the frame is solid. Uh, the deck boards are all there, not falling apart. Um, it has not been registered since 19. 2019. Yeah. Yep. But uh, from what I could see, without crawling way under it. Uh, everything I can see by getting down on the ground, I, it's all solid. But what it? I mean, we would we would pay for that just through the summer with the movements yes. that you are right. currently paying somebody well, else. That's to, what I was going to say. To by do. the time we by the time we pay Johnny, you know, for eight or ten moves a year, we pay for the thing and yeah, and, and, and more than paid for it actually. Absolutely. I mean, it's a. For me, it seems like a no-brainer. And, and do we need to do anything to use it with our trucks? Is the stuff all no. there just to hook up the air brakes? And yeah. We have glad hands on one of our trucks and a middle hitch. And so also, just... we had, we looked at it. You, you, you and I looked at it this morning, and we probably, if we have to repair it, we have money in the yes, the equipment repair fund mm -hmm. this year. This year, so far. you have. Uh, that's just all inclusive, like what we pay for moving and all that. It's just, you know, there's not a separate line item for any of that in the in the budget, right? So it's just grouped in with everything. I mean, yeah, I. It seems like a no brainer. Guys, I like Johnny a lot, but since we've owned our excavator, we've bought a brand new trailer two times over. <laughs> so, go buy that trailer. So the only, just a minute, Bridget, the only question I have is, the knock I always hear about trailers is, they sit around, and it's my observation too, is they sit around most of the time, of course, and they rust like a son of a bitch. Well, true, so but you don't use them in the, the wintertime, so you don't get the road salt on them. So this one has But I mean, is it, but so my question is, is there something, anything within reason, I don't want the guys crawling around with bar and chain oil every week, but I mean, is there, oh, just, just is there something we can do to pressure try and get as much of it, a fluid film it the best you can and then just keep after it once a year? Yeah. I'm supportive of that. Somebody want to make a motion? Well, Spend a little money tonight? I, I was just going to ask you this um, kind of a, uh, an informed question. I just know that when you're dealing with that much weight and that much um, light, there's um, more restrictions for who drives at that yes. type of thing. Yes, you have to have a Class A CDA. And I was just wondering, do we have we one? We have that. Okay. We have that multiple was... drivers that have that. Okay. Including me. Go team. 
make a motion that we approve the purchase of the 20 ton trailer for the $2,500 as stated and recommended by the road commissioner and road foreman. There was a second. I'll second. Oh, I'll second. I'll let Bridget take it. Okay, Bridget's fine. Get, get Bridget's name in those, in those minutes. All right. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the purchase of a 20 ton trailer for $2,500. All in favor? Aye. And we don't have to talk about the trailer for a few years. Guess what? I think I've spent all your money tonight. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any more. The only thing that we're working on also, Eric, is the, the sign over in Putnamsville. That yes. Eric's that's, doing that's a diligent a job, but it's very difficult. My sign, but yes. So I talked to uh, tech support, and they said that uh, I should go over there with a computer and hook up to it with Bluetooth in a, a hotspot so they could connect to it. And I was like, I don't know how that's going to happen. There's no cell service there. So I might have to take some parts off the other one to see if they work on this one to find out which one's bad. So it's not a battery charging issue. It's some kind of electronic yeah. issue that the battery won't charge. Yeah. Um, so no, I think it's a, it's a control issue. So I don't believe it's a battery issue. I believe it's a control issue like oh, okay. in the board. So I'll be born lives right next to that sign, correct? It's yeah. not far from his house. He, right. he kind of took the lead on Oops. Getting that sign, Alby Bourne. Oh, Alby. Okay. Yeah. Um, lives on the right-hand side there. If you're heading yeah. towards Worcester, um, I'm wondering if he's close enough and would be gracious enough to say, hook into my Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a. I don't know if it's even possible, but just knowing where the sign is and knowing he's relatively close, it may be it something may be, that. And we can. Well, the other thing is, it can't be that complicated to take the thing off the <laughs> pole and take it back to the shot. Well, just, just, I mean, the parts are right there and right off, so it's just no, a well, right. If it's that easy, then maybe it's, yeah, that's the easiest path. But. Yeah, let's get her first. Okay. You got his number, right? He's the guy that called us first. I do not, but you have it, right? I have Albie Gordon's number. Okay. Between Sarah and I, you will have it. Awesome. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, bum, bum, bum. Reviewing and approving survey to be sent to village residents regarding potential municipal water needs, rust benefit, and galaxy of yes to attend action likely. Uh, we have Sandy Levine's draft, which she sent all of us. Yeah. Um, did did Russ get this? Excuse me? Did, 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 um, did Russ get this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Craig, seen it. We've seen it. Looks reasonable. It looked good to me. Yeah. And uh, looked like it was meeting all the objectives. I would have, as I said, I would cut out the wastewater part, but mm -hmm. others respectfully disagree, so I'm fine with a few wastewater questions. Um, and the concept is we're going to send this out to the 35 or 37 prospective users and a few other designated individuals correct Sarah I don't know it's, it's what okay well that's I believe that's what we talked about yeah yeah I think you guys need to define what area is. I, I, I'm not going to define the area that we're sending this out to right. so what we can do is we'll provide you guys with a list of what we have for information span numbers for the parcels that we believe and then you guys can Correspond the landowners, or do you want us to come with the actual landowner names? I think we should correspond with the landowners. Oh, yeah, I, I, no, I didn't mean correspond. I meant more if we give you the span numbers of the parcels that we think would potentially be able to connect, you can take those span numbers and correspond them to the landowners and the contact information. So, can I just have. make a suggestion? Span yep. is, has to do with the education tax rate. Yep. I just need the parcel ID. That way, th those all correspond with roads. Okay. And if you give me the, um, you know, if you just actually just draw a map, I mm -hmm. can try to figure it out because there's been some land changes since then. So you probably might not know who's changed hands. In that you definitely have a map that I can I can pass along to. Okay. Who's going to pay for this? Yes, One Russ. thing that I thought a little bit about is we've sort of thought about the. Um, <clears throat> The area that goes along the river, along, along the river too. See, this is why I need a map. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the, map that, the map that you have. But I think there's probably 
not, we could, from where our water supply is and where a reservoir is, we might be able to actually serve, we could definitely serve Center Road up till someplace and might, might be almost over to the other side because um, the proposed elevation of the um, Storage tank. Ta storage tank is 750 feet, which is quite a bit above, you know, the, the, the little river road there on the other side. So there may be option for more, um, yep. for more users than we were sort of narrowly thinking. And also, one of the things I think to think about is that if if you go ahead and do this it's likely that there will be more users or subdivisions or whatever that happens within whatever districts there are because there'll be a, a desire to use infrastructure that doesn't presently exist. And I think that includes just even right across the street from us where Kingsbury yeah. and those guys are, they have a need for a lot of water there. So I guess my, my quick answer to your question, Sarah, is I think we, the town, can pick up the relatively modest expense of sending out 35 or even 50 letters, and I realize it takes time to print that's and that's stuff and all that. I know. That's a pretty big job you're asking. I'm sorry? That's a pretty big job. You know, it's not something, I've got to, I've got to do it. It's, I don't have a, I have to, it's okay, I'll figure it out. But it's, I need to have clear boundaries of where this is going to be. And uh, so over the hill, I need to know where that hill stops. Are we going down to? Uh, are we going down to the bridge that leads to Morristown and Waterbury? Are you? Uh, you know, is it? I assume all of Gallison, uh, the, this community behind Sticks and stuff. Um, you know, we, I just need clear, clear boundaries. Yeah, but it sounds like Craig. Can yeah, well, Craig's going to give us some map. We're going to we're going to look it yeah. over. And then you can ask me if there's any questions related to that, but it'll have parcel information and a boundary, so. Um, it'll get you the law. Right. Because right now my mailing list is all just al alphabetized. Sure. And so I have to match a mailing list that I use for town reports to a map. And that's not something that is... Well, I think it should come from us. Right. right. Yeah. You can do that. With, uh, that's drama. Um, we, can, we can certainly get a list that has all the parcel ID numbers like she's asking for. Yeah. And she should be able to cross-reference that with the actual contact information based on the parcel ID. So, yeah, I, I think we can get you what, we're, what you're looking for, and if it isn't, you tell me what else you need, and we'll get it for you. Yeah, okay. Great. Anything else on this subject for tonight, guys? Do we need a motion for the question? Yep. I'm not good at this, guys. You got that. You got that. You're very good at it. You just... You put that little title in there after the, the word ISO move. Let me watch. <laughs> okay, I will do something unusual. I will make the motion myself that uh, we go ahead with sending out the survey to a designated list of uh, potential users and that the town will incur the uh, expense of preparing and, and mailing that out. Um, Craig will help us out with some parcel ID information and whatever else we need to make sure we make sure we uh, target the right people. Absolutely. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. We're good. Thank All you, right. gentlemen. Thank you for the time. Yes. Thanks for your patience. No problem. A lot of things to talk about. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good night. Dorinda, treasurer report. Uh, nothing to really report on town finances. I'll have more to report in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, other than that, um, we did get eight invoices from RB Technology going back for expenses going all the way back to April. Um, which I sent an email, I guess we had a problem with um, battery backup uh, a few weeks ago. So they were 
ready to go out and buy us a battery back. I said, wait a minute, we've got a server upgrade coming, you know. What is the status? I said, I've heard nothing on the upgrade. You were supposed to be changing our email addresses. You were supposed to be um, installing a computer we had sitting here for six months and got no response. So that was... Who did you, who did you to the, the support. You can't talk to anybody unless you really jump through hoops. Mm -hmm. Everything goes through their support system. So I finally, I um, wrote a letter to Ruben and said, I asked this question over two weeks ago. I've gotten no response. Well, he finally came back and he says, well, you were on my list to call today. And he says, we've been so busy and so this, so that, we haven't had a chance to get around to. He says, but, you know, I'm going to start working on this and that. And, but we never got any further of when this other stuff is going to be done. And then I end up, later that afternoon, we get eight invoices, like I said, that go back to April. So Cheryl wrote an email with my approval to their bookkeeper saying this was unacceptable, that we work on a budget, and um, no response. That was last, early last week. Still no response. And she CC'd Ruben on it. No response. I really think that we have a problem there. As much as we said we sat down and met with them, they're not, I think they've outgrown their, and that's basically what he said. He didn't have enough people, he didn't have this. But they have no problem charging us for a monthly fee every month. Um, so I, I just am really concerned about the service we're getting with them. Yeah. Well, that's and we signed that contract and um, now, are these, are these bills within the hours that we've allotted? Not all of them. No. Nope. And you signed you have any... an order for, and then they billed us for July, which we did not pay, but there's an order in there tonight um, that I think it was like, was it $1,800? It's something yeah, like it was... that, 15 or 1800 And um, But I, that's just really unacceptable. So the question is, what if anything do we do? Do we call Ruben back in here again? Well, Probably. I I just want to. I mean, we entered into this contract with him with all these promises, and he hasn't followed through on one. Why would he do any more if we called him in and talked to him? Yeah. So I I just want to bring it to your attention. I mean, no, I appreciate right it. Right now, we're probably stuck between a rock and a hard place, but. Um, I'm trying to find the email I got from him, but it was... Sarah, what was the time frame when you were having all the problems here? Just wondering how much of these when invoices. When I was thrown under the bus as the person who was the problem, that hurt my feelings. Since we're all talking about feelings tonight, that hurt my feelings. No, I think he's talking about the avenue situation. Oh, for the router? For the no. router. Oh, the router. The router was, uh, what was the time frame? Was that just two months ago, a month and a half ago? Well, it's got to be in, it's got to be somewhere, and I'm trying to figure it out here. Well, this is, so it, it'll tell you, so it's April. March, April, and May, we've got right. portal storage fees, and then we have monthly services for April and I June. Have, I haven't seen Ruben at a meeting yet. Yeah. It was before my time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we're talking he, about when they came in. When he came yeah. in, that yeah. was January. Yeah. Yeah. I was, so that was right. when I, I, it was when I got back from vacation, and you guys had had a really wicked storm here. Right. Yeah. Right. right. And by the way, I was here late the, uh, last week when you we had a storm. And all the all the compute there was no battery backup for any of the equipment downstairs. My computer has a battery backup that's lasted. The computer downstairs that the public that had a battery backup, and that worked that stayed on. But everything else immediately shut down. That's when the you could hear it hit the ground and go. 
I mean, it was really intense. Yeah, it was really intense. But yeah. I mean, there should be that. There should they should be hitting a wall like that. There should be a chance for us to go run around and turn off the computers. Right. I had to say. And is it because some of the batteries are bad, and some of those? Well, those battery backups only last so long. They yeah, don't, no, no, no. But they, they but should our, last. Like, for they should be sized so they last for 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they give you a chance so, to. Yeah. This was long, on long enough so that I could turn it down, turn it off. I could go downstairs to the public computer, but all the other computers, the listers, the bookkeeper, yeah. and our server just went down. Boom. Boom. Nothing. So do they have uninterruptible power supplies and they're not working? Or they I don't, don't have know. Them? I don't deal with them. I don't know. They should. It should be a chance for us to like power down all our equipment in a situation like that. Right, correct. Well, so, so we don't know right now, Dorinda, when, I mean, this was the time when we were supposed to be getting that server, right, in the next right. month or we so? Right, we wanted it the first of the, uh, for July, we said that, you know, we wanted it in the new budget. He said he's going to work up a quote for the work below and will get to me next week. Um, we got completely bombarded by sites with servers running Windows 2012, and which you know goes out of support in October. And he's just going on about that. And he says, um, then he says, of course, none of this is your problem. I apologize for the radio silence. Being busy is one thing, but I should have been more communicative. That's what he always says. That's what he always says. <laughs> That's my point. You know, so I just. I mean, the only I thing I the only thing I would say, and I'm not trying to defend them, is almost every organization I deal with who I'm trying to get, whether it's work on one of my buildings or at my house or on my vehicles or on my equipment or whatever it is, same I get the same right? thing everywhere I go. Yes, we can get you in. It'll be six weeks. Yeah, but look how long the computer clip. There. He was, when he was, at the when meeting, he was here in he January, that, that doesn't right have to wait. That's going to be outdated before it ever gets installed. I know, guys. I know. I'm just telling you. Obviously, they're overwhelmed and they don't have enough employees. But yeah. I'm just saying it's it's a very in this day and age. Unfortunately, it's a very common problem. It's frustrating. It's aggravating. I get it. Um, but I don't really know what we can uh, what we can do. I don't think we can shift horses now. If it goes on, I think we have to consider shifting horses. But every time we, every time we talk about doing that, we come back to the same old issues. So I don't know. I know it's frustrating to you during the. Well, it's not frustrating, you, but Sarah. I just think that you know it's unfortunate we keep going down the same path. It seems like. Yeah. Peter, yes. is there some, an IT person that is in the town that might be able to offer up some support and a volunteer basis to get you from at least that? I mean, I could set that computer up, but you I don't. can't, though, because they've got all the passwords. They, they won't give us any they won't give security, you, nothing. It's, but maybe there was somebody that if he, based on his background. The, the problem is that they are very proprietorial to their soft passwords. So yeah. we're kind of at their mercy. Gotcha. That's too bad. So the other thing I would say is we made what in the end I think was an unfortunate decision. Phil Hayek volunteered to set up our town email mm -hmm. system and we supported him in that and it basically never worked the way it was supposed to. Right. And you know, he was a good guy, he was doing his best, but it just it just couldn't happen. So and that's the I think it's I you know if it's if it's some minor little thing, yes maybe, but any kind of serious setup or organization, we're pretty much we're pretty much stuck. And the other problem is that when you look at the cast of characters out there who we could potentially use, um, it's kind of a kind of a bad picture. I'm not saying impossible, but it's a bad picture. It's not like they're four to pick from, and any one of them might be better. Gotcha. So it's a challenge. Well, maybe we put something on town letterhead and signed by Peter, and that if the, that uses words like disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, I don't know, other than just leaving it to Dorinda to keep calling. Well, I don't mind, I don't mind calling. Victor's question's a good question. What, what good does it do? Okay, um, if it makes everybody feel every better, it's worth making the phone call. But I mean, I think what we do need to know, which I am willing to make a phone call about, is so okay. 
when are we going to get this server? When are we going to well, get that that's computer what you set up? It's supposed to get back to me next week. That was written to me on June 15th. Okay. So I um, say give it a shot and use words like reputation. And well, I'm going to I'm going to call them. Yeah. And just say, hey, you know, once again, room, but I'm getting the heat. I've taken the heat for you before, and I'm. Well, the problem is, is we can't go down the, every time you do that, he figures somebody here is being the bad person. Like, he doesn't want to deal with Sarah anymore, because Sarah used to complain. Now I'm complaining, and he's not going to want to deal with me. Pretty soon there's not going to be anyone sitting here that's willing to deal with him. You know? So, I just, I wanted to bring it to your attention because I don't think it's right, whether he's busy or not, to get bills going back to April when we're already looking at how our budget's going to well, what, what do they say? What do, what do they say when you, they Nothing just say, they well, we haven't respond. had a chance to deal with them? No, they, they didn't respond. What if we just stop paying? <laughs> they did not respond, you know? So it was like, I Maybe just, we should be paying our bills in the same manner in which we receive them, Ruben, four months late. Yeah, they've got all that. They've got all that scary language in their contract about what happens if we don't pay right on the. Right. I don't know. Oh, I get it. It's well, frustrating. You can't really not pay because then it gets well, all the your situation gets are... worse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh boy, he's got a big. He's got a good hand. <laughs> well. So. Um, so you would prefer me not to call her enough? I, I don't. I think that, you know, it's probably, I, I'm bringing this up because I think it's something that you really should think about, you know, do we continue to sign contracts with them or, well, or I want it in the record that we've had more issues. When we signed this last contract with them, kind of held over the barrel, so to speak, due to the timing, um, if everybody remembers that correctly, and we signed it knowing and reviewing, you know, the termination uh, policy and how we might proceed to continue to explore other options even after signing and uh, having, putting ourselves in a situation where we had the time to adequately search for other services. And maybe we're there. Yeah, but for the record, it's in the record. Well, let's do this. If you don't hear from when did he promise you to have a response for you? Next, Next week. week? That's this week. It's he coming to an end fast. Yeah, he said get back to me. Well, if he doesn't get back to you by Friday, would you just send me a quick email and say I haven't heard anything from Roman? Mm -hmm. And I'll follow up. Yeah. Um, let's see. The only other thing I had is I spent some time uh, going through the last financial report that we had, mm -hmm. and you know, it looks to me, unless something unbelievably unforeseen comes up, like we're going to be fine for year end. Yeah, I think the last one we got, it did look, but then again, these things we've got a lot of last minute expenses that, um, you know, get fall into it, but um, I think we'll be okay. We yeah. won't be that far off, if yeah, we're off. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's okay then. Um, and the setting the tax rate, um, I think that I was hoping to do it for uh, next, the first meeting in July for the 4th or 5th. 4th is a holiday, but um, it looks like we're going to have to set it back another week, so it may not be till the second week of July before I have the information. Okay. Well, I don't know what people have for plans over the 4th when they're going to be out of town or unavailable, but I was just going to recommend that we push the meeting back a week anyway just to avoid that whole yeah. issue. Um, but again, I don't know how others feel about this. I am going to be around. I've got all these submarine people coming to town. I just want to say that uh, the, talking to the listeners and everyone, I'm not sure the state's going to be ready with its, uh, with its magic number for the education rate especially since it's coming up on that weekend. There probably won't be enough time to process what you guys are going to be dealing with. They usually produce that education rate on, on June 30th, yep. which is, what, is that like a Saturday or something? They've come out with them on the weekends, but right. 
just uh, it might be you might not have the information you need on July 5th. Yeah, and that's for setting the final rate. I mean, it's the local portion that you guys need to figure out. Yeah. Um, I've initially gone through it, and right now it looks like with initial numbers, we're probably talking 13 or 14 cents increase. Yeah. yeah. No surprise. Well, unless anybody else is thinking differently than I am, I would suggest that we postpone that first minute meeting in July until the following Tuesday, whatever day that is. Is that the 11th? Yeah. I just did all the Does that work for everyone? No. I support that. Okay. okay. What's the, what's the, uh, what, do you, what do you normally do? What's the policy uh, if, uh, you know, we seem to be postponing stuff for, if somebody's out, if, so, if one of us aren't here, there's no policy. There's no policy that there my, my practice has been when we make a major or potentially confrontational or difficult decision on an issue, I prefer to have all the board members present if it's possible. And certainly setting the tax rate is one of the most important things we do as much as Dorinda does 90% of the work and we approve her work. Um, that is where the rubber hits the road and I would be Sorry if people had to miss that meeting. I think it's important. Um, but there's no policy. So I like to deal with things. I like to get them off the table, but I also like to have everybody involved in the decision-making process. So I'm trying to walk that a fine line. Line, walk that fine line, yep. Anything else, Dorinda? Uh, no. Okay. Okay, everybody's favorite subject, Welch Park update, action possible. Well, action may be possible, but it seems to be impossible. I called uh, Riley last week and said, hey, how are, we, how are we doing on those documents? And he said, I'm working on them, but I don't have them yet. He said, I'm going to come in Monday next week on the holiday and work on them, and I'll get right back to you before the meeting on Tuesday. Well, of course, he didn't get back to me. Uh, but I know he is working on them, and I'm trying to keep the heat on them. The best I can. I mean, again, the status is I think we have verbal agreement on a plan that's getting in writing and getting everybody's approval to get it done. Um, orders or busily signing orders, correspondence? Um, no, I just, if you, uh, I'm just going to give you one really quick update on, on Rich Road. So, as Dorinda was, uh, as I just going to mention, we've received our money for the buyout. It's in our account, and you guys have it in the order, so it's going yep. to the lawyer, so that's done. I've sent out RFPs for the asbestos consulting, and I've sent out RFPs for the demo. And the first RFPs for the asbestos consulting are due 4.30 p.m. Tuesday the 11th. Depending on what we get, possibly we might be able to, to vote on them at that meeting. So we'll have to wait to the meeting weekend. So uh, we're moving right along, and uh, ideally, we'll. I've talked to a couple of contractors. They seem to think that it could be done in 45 days. Wow, that'd be great. That would be awesome. As long as it isn't twice what we projected in terms of cost. No one knows. Right. Right. Yeah, you got to get the. Got to get the testing results back and kind of get the testing results back and stuff like that yeah yeah anyway, that's well it's happening we've, we've expended our seven dollars and 39 cents or whatever it is so that's good not yet shall we get the check to the 30 the 29 <laughs> 10 a.m so that's it and then you yeah. guys can work on uh, on downgrading that road so eric won't have to uh plow it in the winter would that be nice? Very nice. Um, just thinking about timing and meetings and whatnot, the discussion around moving the first meeting to the second week. Um, historically, have you done two meetings right in a row? Uh, so we would still meet on the 18th? Yeah. Yes. If that works for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be away the following week, so I just want okay, to make I sure will be, we I will be too. Yeah. So, okay. I will be too. All right. I never got the question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd, be glad, I'd be glad to give you some counseling on that subject if you need it. We can handle it, right, Bridget? Yes, we can handle it. 
Um, anything else come before the select board this evening? I don't want to micromanage. So I'll let you look at this, Victor, and you can say something about uh, the discrepancies. We're talking about that. Talking about paid time off. Yeah. That was put through as time worked. Yeah. That's overtime? There's four hours of vacation on those two labor logs and only two submitted. Approved by Eric. Eight hours. There you go. Thirty-eight and two. Got eight hours. Two hours. He's got two more hours of vacation time here that weren't accounted for that were put in as work time. So it's just not coming off of his numbers for vacation time. Correct. Okay. So I think what Randy, what I'm hearing is that. Um, I think what Vic was saying, though, it's not that he doesn't want you to micromanage. He wants, I think what I was hearing is that we need to look at Eric on a new, in a new way. And so he's, he hasn't, um, I think if we point this out to him and ask him. Which is exactly him, what I've been accused of micromanagement for. Okay. But I think what maybe what Vic is saying is, well, and I won't, yeah. Uh, anyway, I, 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 I think that. Um, what do you want us to do? Copy these and give them to Eric or have them come down to a county? You deal with that however you want. I'm just pointing out the issue. Well, I would like you to keep pointing it out. I, just, I agree. I, I, I just don't think that. I think what I was hearing from Eric is that. I was. Uh, that, 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 that we were that the, the lens that we were looking at his position in was something that was outdated based on previous performance. And that, and, and I don't think that Vic was asking for you not to be looking at these numbers as closely as you are, and I'm glad you pointed out because I did not look at it as closely as I, as I may have, should, may should, you know what I'm trying to say. Could have. Could have. Um, but I think that this is an excellent example of how he needs to be managed as much as uh, as his he needs to be managing his people. It all needs to come up a level. If he's going to be, um, if he is going to take on this responsibility, he has to um, he has to he, errors like this sh shouldn't be happening, especially on the day that well, he's he's coming forward with the proposal. Quite honestly, errors are going to happen all of the time. I don't appreciate being accused of micromanaging when I'm holding people to the standard that we need to be holding people to. That's That instance right there is the extent of what my communications have been thus far mm -hmm. with Eric and just calling out stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to be accused for micromanaging by doing what I just did there, then, then I'm sorry, but I feel like I'm doing the town residents the justice that they deserve. I think that the words that, that triggered Eric, perhaps you didn't mean them in a, in a, you were speaking universally across the department versus, you know, he just heard you're fired, you know, if you don't perform your fire. And, and so, but yes. I'd like to add, though, that this is the thing I'm being accused of micromanaging where these are the kinds of problems that come across the desk when we're trying to do payroll. We're trying to adhere to a policy that I'm trying to get clarifications. I've taken so much heat about boots 
I've taken a lot of heat about the way things are calculated. I'm just trying to oversee what the voters have approved and what is in the personnel policy. And to be told that I am a problem, there is a problem. So I just, I don't appreciate it. I'm trying to do my job that I was elected to do and manage the town's money. As well, we don't appreciate sometimes. I think sometimes it's the attitude. There's no attitude there. Listen, guys, let's, let's. No, if you want to talk about it, I I'll bring it out. I want to talk about it. I, I'd love it, to talk it, about it. A select this board. goes back three months. This goes back about three, four months. Good. Let's talk. If you want to talk about it. If you don't want to talk about it, Peter, you're the chairman. I just don't think you would I would prefer, I don't think it would be productive, and I think we should adjourn the meeting for tonight. But I, my, my comment on this is it's all of our responsibility in our own way to keep an eye on what's going on in the town. And certainly Dorinda and her in her role is right at the center of the tornado or whatever when it comes to payroll. And, you know, she's very conscientious about getting the payroll done in a timely manner. When she gets incorrect information and she has to go back and follow up and call and say, what about this and what about that? That's extra time for her and it's inconvenient and it's annoying. And when she gets pushed back on top of that, it's even more annoying because that truly is her job. Her job. And uh, that's what the treasurers do. It's not what this is about. It's not what it's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about a job. You said tonight explicitly that Randy and I. I used the word micromanage. No, you said we, you guys, are a problem of micromanaging what he does. I'm not micromanaging. It's not just him. I'm... Like I said, everybody in this room has brought it up, and I'm the only one that's come up and bring it up and saying it. Now, if Everybody's you want to go down that road, I'm more than willing to. I'm more than willing. Uh, but you it's, got it's, something to say, Vic, you say it. It's, it's been brought up many times. Well, if there's other people in this room right now have a problem, they better speak their piece. There, well, Peter's the only one. Sarah's one. Oh, good. Then they got if something to say. If they want to say, say something, go ahead. I haven't said it. Oh, well, you there we go. So oh, you're changing, no, 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 yeah, sir. You're yeah. changing your mind. Now. Oh, yes. Because yeah. people talk out of both sides of their mouths. All right, but this is triangulation, and it's not okay. It's, it is. So, but what's happened, because it's, it's hearsay. And, and I mean, it's not the it's first not, time that Sarah has done this to me. She'll get me started, and then she'll say, oh, oh I didn't I know. say that. Some people like to stir the pot. Okay, right. so it's it's not productive. Um, you know well, that's what? what I'm trying to say. Let I me mean, solve all your problems. I resign. Okay. No, see, there. This isn't working. Does that help, Vic? I'm not. Sarah? This isn't okay. No. Wait, hold on here. I hope you guys, you guys have fun no. setting up the tax rate. No. I have had it. I do hear this from everybody. Sarah said this, Peter said that, Victor said what this. What have I said? Well, I don't know. Ask what have I said? Ask what Victor. I said? Victor just threw you under the bus. I didn't throw you under the bus. You actually did say when you took Peter. This yeah. Yeah, when you brought Peter down to Dartmouth, you came back and said we talked about it, and mm -hmm. we both got to say that Dorinda and Randy have got to back off and let Pete, let Eric do his job. That's I want the you to God's know, honest truth. I am the biggest supporter of that gentleman. He doesn't that feel that way. Oh yes, I, he does. Oh no, he doesn't. That's why he said that tonight. No, I he didn't. Said, I just talked to him before he left. Guys. Stop. Yeah, this is on. Well, this is, I don't care this if it's on TV or not. Maybe it should awful. be on TV. This is absolutely awful. This First is absolutely all, awful. Now, I apologize. I apologize for whatever I have said that has that has given that impression. I don't have want to lose you as a friend, and I don't want to lose you as a treasure. Do people stay say something to her? Be loving to be sad. Yes. Victor thinks, Victor thinks Randy and I are in collusion together. Is that what you think? Oh yes, because that's come back to me too. I think, I think. I will, tell you, I will tell you flat out, one of the biggest reasons that I sit here is because I didn't feel like there was transparency. I do not, anything I have to say is said right here in this meeting. We do not have transparency. 
As far as I'm concerned, everything I have to say happens right here in this meeting. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I think it's the attitude and the way you say it. Guys, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Do you want to continue this? I'd like to just say something about the window. Excuse me? Nothing. I just, I, maybe, I don't know. I just don't I refuse to sit here and have my character brought to question on anything I'm doing here. If you, if anybody has anything to say, say it out in the open. I don't have any problem. That's what I'm. Want that's that's my personality. That's the way I am. These town residents deserve to have a sense of transparency within this board. Right. That's the whole reason I got involved here. Right. It's basically the same reason we all got involved here. Okay. And I don't think I'm not being transparent. I know it's not very pleasant to say, but. I think that, uh, you know. And you know what? I can appreciate that. I, mean, I totally I totally can. If, I mean, there's I, a, it, if there's an issue with something, it needs to be brought up and it needs to be dealt with. No, it's not so much an issue with these cards. It's, it's, it's an issue with attitude. It's I'm attitude sorry if I feel like people should be held accountable. Well, it's not that. It's how you say it. It's how you say it. It's how, you're, how Dorinda says it. You heard her. You heard her. You sat right here one night, and she and I, when I and when she didn't pay me correctly, and I said it's not the money. It kind of hurts my feelings, though, because I went beyond, above and beyond, to help Eric, to help the town, and I just cut back afterwards. After she, she said, I, I, she said, well, what do you want me to do? I said, you could apologize. Well, that's not going to happen. Is what that did a very she need to apologize for? There was a calculation put in place. And whether you felt like the calculation was proper or improper, no, no, you don't at know the what end of the day, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about what I heard in this me in this meeting. Right. But what you don't know is that I explained to her exactly what happened, and and she just sat there and would not would not accept any of it at all. And I was wrong, but then she found out I was right. So wouldn't you say? Geez. So what's the so what's the big deal? If, if somebody is if, wrong and, the and they deal, make a correction the to deal, it, they, what, what is the they big They didn't make deal? a correction, though. See, you, she didn't say, she you didn't. said right here in that meeting that you got paid properly after, after you made a big issue about it. I, I did get paid finally. But after doing all this stuff extra and then turn around and she kind of laughed at it when she was handing out your paychecks. Yeah, you're going to kill me. And I think that, because I don't mind, I, it's not the money. It's just the idea she could have said that, oh, I'm sorry, you were right. I didn't realize it. But she sat right there and wanted to argue with me, I guess I'm mad that uh, I had to leave. But that's not the only thing. I mean, she's telling people. Well, that, that, let's, let's talk about me, because she's not here to defend right, herself, right. and I don't, I don't okay, think that that's appropriate. For you. But it is, the way you said, we're going to fire you, those people. I didn't say we were going to fire anybody. I said if somebody right. refuses to do their job on a regular basis, they should be fired. If they don't show up. I said, you know, you can't. You said that they could refuse to do their they job. They can. They refuse. They can. They and can. I said if they refuse on a regular basis, they should be fired. Yeah, that's a good message to send to the crew. We is it a good message to send to them that it's okay to, to not hold up their end of the employment bargain? And the, and the taxpayers are just at risk of somebody saying, sorry, we're not going to do this. We're not going to hold up to our end of the bargain. But it's, and and the, it's okay because we're going to continue to employ you. Well, Is that okay? It's a little bit mean-spirited to say it. Like you're stealing. You guys, are, you're selling your time. You're selling your time. That's an inappropriate thing to say. You may feel that way, but that's not a way to handle it. We could have said. No, I said it was buying their time. And the policy is that, we don't, is, is that we do not do that. It comes down back to a policy issue, and I've said it right from the get-go. Right. If the policy was that we bought out time, I would be more than in favor of it. But Eric has taken it the other way and saying, you guys are trying to cheat us out of our old time. And perhaps you're a cog in the wheel and you're replaceable no matter what. Right. That it's not like, I go through this... There are people on our staff that like to think of everybody as a family and we work through things as a team. 
Um, and then there are, there are other people that are much more clinical in their thinking, but that doesn't mean that both people have something. We need everybody at the table. Right. And you need to be able to have that conversation. I I'm here having the conversation. I have, I'm not sitting here, I'm presenting the picture that it costs the town more money and it's unbudgeted money and, and that's where that's my, been my stance on this right from the get-go so your what you're coming to the table with is just as valuable as what victor's coming to the table with which is people's feelings are getting hurt we consider them to be valuable players for the t for the, the the community and and maybe we could tread more softly and maybe we could that, I think that's all. I, th I think that everybody's coming to the table with a skill set and a and a point of view um, that only improves your product. So we are off the air, correct? No. No. Okay. No. Well, we should be. I've adjourned yep. the meeting.